In 1954, a New York car dealer called Max Hoffman put in a phone call to Ferry Porsche. Having already suggested the iconic 300 SL to Mercedes, he now put forward the idea of a stripped-out Porsche costing less than $3,000. Thus, the Speedster was born. The 991 Speedster. This was a car that Andreas Preuninger, head of the GT Cars department, first actually mooted the idea of six years ago, back in 2013. And the fact that it's a GT Cars product is important. It's not a poser's car. A Speedster shouldn't be. It should be all about the driving should be stripped back, it should put you in closer contact with the road and your surroundings and of course your soundtrack. You get in and straight away you want to press that loud exhaust button, the binoculars button, to give you as much sound as possible to really hear that flat sits in all its glory. As you may know, Porsche, just like other manufacturers, has had to introduce particulate filters to its exhausts, although thanks to a redesign it has somehow managed to lose 10 kilos from the system in the process. There was a worry that the filters would muffle the soundtrack somewhat, and indeed the Speedster does seem a tiny bit softer in its note. But Porsche says this is just the dampening effect of having a fabric roof on top of the engine, cloaking some of the mechanical chatter. Talking of mechanical chatter, the Speedster's 4 litre flat 6 actually has 10 brake horsepower more than the GT3 thanks to the addition of individual throttle bodies and even higher pressure injectors, taking the total output to 503 brake horsepower at 8,400 RPM. It's so lovely having a manual gearbox. That will be no surprise to you, but it really, really is. You've got an auto blip button, which you could always disable the auto blip if you wanted to in the past, but in sport it was there all the time unless you took the ESC off, so now you can just disable it and do all yourself if you want to. Sardinia is, of course, a pretty perfect place for a speedster, but even on this idyllic Italian island, the weather can be capricious. So, we should probably have a chat about the roof. Now originally this wasn't actually going to have any roof at all and indeed the concept that I saw last year at Goodwood didn't. It just had a tonneau cover which was quite cool but perhaps for understandable reasons they decided that bringing this to market customers might want some sort of rain cover as all the previous speedsters have. So I'm going to show you how to put it up. First of all press this button here. Wander around here and if this big rear deck up which is actually very light it's only 10 kilos because it's all carbon fibre under here. And you lift this up, being careful not to catch fingers under there. Then, back around here, and slide this back into place. Put these ears down. Just press this button to finish it off electrically. And Robert's your mother's brother. Now, I actually had a really nice quote about the difference between a cabriolet and a speedster. A cabriolet is a car that you sometimes drive with the roof down, while a speedster is a car that you only ever occasionally drive with the roof up. So, I think that's enough sun protection for one day. Apart from the roof then, most of the rest of the car is pretty much identical to a GT3. Gone are the impractical mirrors and central fuel filler of the concepts, but this GT Silver car has something called the Heritage Pack, which gives you gold lettering, black and cognac interior, and the original design of Porsche Shield, all of which aesthetically lifts the car more than you might think. 0-62 miles an hour is covered in 4 seconds dead, 
can blame the added tenth of a second on the speedster weighing, sadly but understandably, 50 kilos more than a normal manual GT3. Perhaps the marketing department should have let the engineers stick with autonomy. Rear wheel steer, dynamic engine mounts and a mechanical limb to slip diff are all present and correct. You also get PCCB as standard for your £211,000, helping reduce the unsprung weight. The dampers, meanwhile, have been retuned very slightly to give a subtly more road-biased setup, a bit like the 911R. So what does all that add up to? Well, as you might imagine, a car that is pretty flipping fabulous. The big question, I suppose, is whether lopping the roof off has taken away any stiffness. Has made it a less precise machine. <laughs> Thankfully not. <laughs> it is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Fast though it is, the speedster isn't about lap times. It is about increased tactility, a heightened sense of speed and that greater connection you get with the landscape you're travelling through when you're in an open car. It is all about the experience. It is the embodiment of la dolce vita for people that love driving. It also seems like a fitting farewell to the fantastic second generation of 991 GT cars. From celebrating the reintroduction of the manual gearbox to the GT3, to seeking out the Suge life in a GT3 RS, to marvelling at the irresistible force of nature that is the GT2 RS. I have loved them, one and all, and they're proof positive that there is life after the Metzger, and with E-Pass. The Speedster? Well, it's simply the open-topped cherry on the cake.